Hey, this is Travis with the Sierra Avalanche Center, and here's our state of the snowpack for Friday, February 10th. Our last storm was on Sunday, February 5th, when we got one to two feet of new snow, and that resulted in this high danger rating for the day. I'll go back to a photo from January 28th to show what that new snow landed on. Uh, this was surface hoar on the surface on the 28th, and then it was buried by just a few inches of new snow on the 29th. And buried surface hoar problems are somewhat rare for this area. Our storms typically come in so hot and heavy that it destroys the surface hoar before we can build a slab on top of it. But because this surface hoar on the 28th was buried by just a little bit of snow on the 29th, that sheltered the surface hoar from the bigger storm on February 5th. Here's a photo from just after the storm on Sunday. Andy is pointing to a line of buried surface hoar under the new slab, and then he removed a block of the snow, and you can see these large feathery grains up against his glove. And then later in the week, here's another photo of buried surface hoar that's still intact. Uh, but this is getting harder and harder to find throughout the forecast region. We did have an avalanche cycle on the 5th. All of these are avalanche reports. Um, although visibility was bad enough on that day, there's a good chance there were more avalanches that people simply couldn't see. And then the weather cleared on the 6th, and we began getting some good photos. Um, this one is from Jake's Peak, and it shows about a foot deep crown, which would be consistent with the depth of the buried surface hoar. This one is from near Blue Lakes, and it appears to show a wind slab avalanche. Later in the week, uh, for the past couple of days, temperatures have really warmed up. And so conditions at this point really aren't that sweet on sunny slopes and we're beginning to see wet instabilities. The National Weather Service is calling for a few inches of snow this weekend, followed by cold temps and northeast winds, and then a bit of a repeat of the same pattern early in the week with a few more inches of snow, uh, more cold temperatures and more northeast winds. So we should be able to find some pretty good travel conditions on cold slopes that are sheltered from the winds. Uh, and how this influences the avalanche danger will really depend on exactly how much snow we get and how the winds move that snow.